Bud, I really want to thank you for having SCRS at the ICAR training facility. Uh, today, I want to talk about the, uh, how to set up a calibration environment. And you guys have a beautiful facility with a beautiful calibration environment. I'd love for you to, to go in further on, on what you guys did to create that. Sure. When we, when we started out, we wanted to create what would be essentially an ideal calibration environment. Um, looking at what the manufacturers require, it's a pretty wide scope. So we looked at things like lighting conditions, uh, level flat flooring situation, um, colors, the right colors in the building, so that we, we looked for making sure we didn't have any kind of metal objects or anything in the way that would cause reflections, you know, all of those type of things. Um, when we initially went to our concrete vendor and said, hey, we need a level flat surface, his response was, I don't think we can do that. Nobody's ever asked us to do that hmm. before. Um, what it ultimately involved, and we have a video to, to show what this was, is we, we had a bunch of 3D lasers that they brought in and a self-leveling product that they had to do in stages to get the floor to be level and flat in that area. So we do have a dedicated space, not the entire lab, but we do have a dedicated space that is level and flat. Yeah, I, I, talking about the concrete vendor, I did learn my lesson. I've, I've built some brick and mortar calibration uh, locations and we ended up having the pour a floor because it had so many drains that it just wasn't worth putting the self-leveling uh, over the floor. And even after we re-poured the whole floor, we found out it still wasn't level. And I realized you can't just bring in any vendor. Uh, a lot of concrete vendors, they're just there to pour concrete and not be meticulous like we need it. Yeah, they're, they're, they understand flat, they don't, don't necessarily understand level. And, and that's the same thing too, with you, you just can't put any type of lighting on. You said uh, it has to be dimmable lighting yeah. and, and that cre creates some uh, uh, different wiring. So the reason for the dimmable lighting, uh, just for those that don't understand, is it was, you, you have some manufacturers that have a combination of static and dynamic calibration. You have to do a static calibration and go out and drive the vehicle. And when you have a lighting condition that is substantially different inside compared to outside, it can make that second calibration, the, the dynamic calibration, take longer or maybe not take at all. And, and you talked about uh, metal exposure, because I know a lot of shops, if they're going to be doing it in-house, there's, there's posts, there's metal walls, there's so on there. What, what's the metal do, the distraction of the metal? It's, it's all about reflection. When you have the radars, you don't want to have anything that's going to cause a, uh, a reflection of the radar that you're not anticipating. Okay. You don't want it to get in the way of the signal. And I know opening up a calibration center, there's the huge investment in the environment, and also there's that huge investment in tooling. And there's all kinds of tooling out there, and uh, there's a lot of people that don't know what to use. What would ICAR recommend? ICAR's position is, is always follow the OEM repair procedures. So, you know, many of the vehicle makers out there do have uh, requirements for tooling and equipment. We say, you know, any vehicle you're gonna calibrate, look up the vehicle maker, uh, requirements and their calibration procedures and follow those. Well, and, and education is a huge part of this and having my calibration centers, I know educating my customers has been huge and we've been actually spending most of our time uh, on the education portion and ICAR has contributed so much to the calibration industry as well on creating their web page, uh, a portion of their web page revolved around this. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, from the training and education side, we have a number of different things available. For example, we have uh, several online courses. Uh, the online courses range from everything from, you know, what do you want to do when you're going to set up a calibration facility? What are the things you need to consider? Uh, dynamic calibration, static calibration, you know, forward-facing cameras, blind spot. We have all those things in there. And then we also have uh, two hands-on training uh, events where one of them is a three-day static calibration course and another one that is focused on dynamic calibration, but that's Ford specific. Um, so we have those. Um, we also have the ICAR RTS, or Repairability Technical Support website, where we have things like the 8S calibration search that you can do that is searchable by year, make, model for the vehicle, and it will help you understand what 8S systems could potentially be on the vehicle, and then what type of calibration requirements there might be, what type of tools and equipment there might be uh, as requirements for those calibrations, things like that. Yeah, that. That's fantastic and it's been a huge asset for the industry. And I feel like whether you're gonna be building a brick and mortar calibration center, whether you're gonna be doing it in-house or obviously a training facility, 
all the requirements are the same no matter what facility you're going to be doing it. And yep. As far as the training requirements, absolutely. Right. You're going to need to understand space, tools and equipment, and training. Well, Bud, thank you for, for having us here today. Uh, it's been a joy, and thank you for the contribution ICAR has been making to the industry. Well, thank you. If you found today's tip helpful, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share the video. Comment below for any future suggestions. These videos are made possible by SCRS. If you aren't currently a member, I encourage you to join. Visit scrs.com or use the link in the description below.